So what happened uh, this week? I think yesterday we got the result of a court case between a citizen, uh, Sasha Rodoy, who is 70, lives in the London borough of Barnet. And she took Barnet Council to court to try to get them to remove some LED, <coughs> excuse me, street lighting that they put in four years ago in January 2020. Immediately that they were put in, she found that she couldn't sleep. She has a, a condition called photophobia because she had some eye surgery. So she was very, very personally affected by the installation of LED lights. Um, they didn't take her complaint seriously, apparently. So she took them to court Things take a long time to get through the courts, but eventually the judgment was made in her favour and Barnet Council were ordered to remove the street lights, the LED street lights in her cul-de-sac and they are going to replace them with the kind of lights that were there previously. Nice orange glowing sodium vapour lights, which we traditionally have had all around the country in the UK, whichever part of the UK we're in. I like them they they glow orange they are they have a nice candor to them they're 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 dim but they're friendly they're warm and everybody likes them but because of the climate alarmist agenda and it is to do with agenda 2030 councils around the country are in the process of replacing all of those old but nice sodium vapor lights around uh, for our street lighting and putting in these harsh nasty stern led lights that glow really bright white and they're like living in guantanamo bay in your own street after the ruling was given um, the claimant, the, the complainant, Sasha Rodoy, said that the council tried to get her to sign a non-disclosure agreement without even offering anything in terms of paying her legal fees because they didn't want anybody to know about the case, which is completely preposterous. The courts should be open. Judgments should be open. A judgment should not be given or uh, implemented on the basis that someone signs a non-disclosure agreement. Um, she refused and you got her lawyers to press the council anyway to change the lights back to the sodium vapour uh, lamps, and they're going to do that. Obviously, she didn't sign the non-disclosure agreement because she wanted everybody to know about the case, and this actually is a case that sets a very important precedent in law. You now have the right as a citizen to get your counsel or take your counsel to court if they have replaced the warm, <clears throat> friendly, human friendly, almost animal friendly sodium lamps with these harsh, horrible LED street lights and the precedent here means that the councils will almost certainly be ordered to change them, particularly if you have a health condition. I know from my own experience, I used to live in the London borough of Bexley. I lived there for five years when I was on the London Assembly. When I moved in, they, again, they were lovely. Uh, it was a conservation area. There were lovely sodium lamps on the streets. One day, they were just were replaced by LED lamps. And also, I lived next to a school, and the school put in LED floodlights in their car park. So every part of my house was flooded at night by this horrible... LED light lighting and it was very hard for me to get to sleep you know what I had to do in the end the only way I could get to sleep was I actually had to put a mattress over the window to block out the LED lights because it was so harsh and so bright uh, it did actually affect my sleep so I have a lot of sympathy with um, Sasha Rodoy, the complainant in this case, because I've experienced the same thing myself. Um, I didn't complain about it and, and say anything publicly. I did once ask a written question 
to Sadiq Khan uh, what he was going to do about it. But I think that the, the response was, well, it's not his problem because it's the boroughs in London that are in charge of the street lighting, which actually is true. You have to take your boroughs to um, court or to complain to them if you have a problem. Now, there are 317 local authorities in England Local councils are a bit of a mess. You know, there's some some places have one, some places have two. There's a county council, there's a district council, there's a unitary authority, whatever. But one of those, where you are, <clears throat> will be responsible for your street lighting. Now, this is something that people have suffered in silence about far too long. These LED lights do affect your sleep. There is uh, evidence that they do cause long-term health effects which are negative particularly if they affect your sleep particularly if they affect your circadian rhythms and maybe for some people they can also affect uh, your eyesight I don't want to say that for sure but I don't want to put uh, any negative feeling on anybody uh, about their eyesight but you know there are studies that show they can have an effect what I would do if I was in a council, if I was a councillor, I would get rid of them all and go back to the warm orange sodium vapour street lighting, which is lovely. It's human friendly. It gives everybody a nice feeling about where they live. You don't need any more than that. We certainly don't need these harsh Guantanamo style LED lights everywhere. I completely oppose that. And I'm very, very glad that Sasha Rodoy has won her court case against Barnet Council to get them to remove the LED lights in her street. This is today's News Talk, TNT. It's the stuff. What citizen wouldn't want to make American great again? People are talking about. It's vilifying MAGO if it's not going to work. Today's News Talk Radio, TNT. Welcome back to the David Curtin Show here on today's News Talk, TNT. Gemma Cooper is with me to tell us about the latest in breaking news and the UK news headlines. Welcome to the show, Gemma. What a lovely good news story to end the week on, David. I, I'm with you on the LED lights. And in fact, the Royal Automobile Association, the RAC, but arguably the biggest motoring uh, organisation in the country with millions of members, um, is lobbying the government for LED lights in cars because saying now they're just too bright, they have a detrimental effect on road safety, that you know they're coming towards you in the middle of the night, you're completely dazzled. I'm sure there are many, if you're listening in the chat, that resonate with that. And they, they do have a terrible effect on the human psyche, don't they? And I had mm. a big love orange street light outside my old property in my bedroom window for years and it, I found it very comforting when it would come on at lighting up time and in the morning when it went off I would know it's time to get up and it was a lovely light so what did they do of course 2020 exactly what you've just been talking about P replaced it with some horrible harsh acidic nasty mm. bright prison style thing which nobody asked for nobody wanted and yet local authorities seem to have plenty of money don't they to replace these led lights they don't have any money to repair the potholes in the roads but when it comes to the lighting and agenda 2030 they got plenty of money for that and nobody likes them nobody i've never met a single person who thinks it's a good idea so i'm delighted to hear that story on a friday it's always so nice to end the week on a positive note so thanks for that <laughs> personally you're welcome you, you know it really i'm really was so chuffed when i heard that story and you know as, as i say nobody likes them like you say everybody hates them they're just it's just happening anyway but not many people realize that they can do anything about it but apparently with um barnet council they have had 368 complaints over the last six years 301 of them about brightness but you know this is actually uh someone taking them to court and forcing them with a court ruling to actually um, go back to these lovely warm sodium lights that we we have. Uh, you, you know, this really is an attack on our, our psyche, our, 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 our mental state of well-being. And, and people realise that. And, and actually, it's good what you said. The RAC are taking a stand on this because it doesn't just affect street lighting. It affects you on the road as well. I mean, they're horrible. I think everybody would have who's, uh, who's a driver would have experienced at night um you just in a, a different level of glare as leds have become um you know standard in modern cars it's really no good <laughs> 